Welcome back everyone. So this week I want to talk to you guys about the hooks and what you can do in the fall through to help prevent it. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And if you are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe to see more golf related content. So whenever a player struggles with curvature, whether it be a slice or a hook, I usually start by explaining the relationship between the club path or swing direction and the club face. So for this example, I put a ball down on a straight object to represent the target line or where you are aiming the club face. And I think this is a great way to show players how the club interacts with the ball in order to create a hook. Now, as a right-handed player, a hook would be caused when the path of the club is traveling too much out to the right relative to where the club face is aiming. If you want to minimize the curvature of the ball, then you have to minimize the relationship between the path of the club and the club face. So what really needs to happen is that the ball will launch slightly right while the club head will move more leftwards. So now that you're more aware of why a hook happens, there's a few things that you can focus on in the fall through that will help neutralize the relationship between the club path and the club face. Now this may sound pretty simple, but there's a few key positions that I want you guys to pay attention to with regards to where your lead arm is positioned and where your trail arm is, is positioned in the, in the fall through that will help get the swing direction more neutral and the club face more open. So as I explained earlier, a player that would tend to hook the golf ball would have a swing direction that's too far in to out or too much out to the right with a very, very closed club face. So after they strike the ball, what I would tend to see all the time is that the exit of the club is very, very high, almost kind of through the neck, um, and the club face is very, very closed. Okay, so if you're someone that gets the club exiting very, very high and out to the right, um, then you're going to want to do more of the opposite. You're going to want to swing a lot more leftwards and across your body with a more open club face. So again, if I swing it out to the right and have a very, very closed club face, you can probably see that the club is pointing more so down towards the ground, whereas when I swing it across my body, you can see that the club face is a bit more exposed um, and, and staying a lot more open. So I, I'm going to swing um, towards the camera just to maybe give you a better visual of this. But um, as I go into my follow through, if I am one of those players that has a swing direction out to the right and I exit very, very high, I want you to pay attention to where my trail arm is relative to my body. Okay, you'll see that it runs through my face um, and like over top of my chest. Okay, now when I get someone to swing more leftwards or um, more across their bodies, I want their, them to feel as though their trail arm moves more across their chest or just kind of underneath the chest instead. Okay, so if it's out to the right, it'd be over top of the chest, um, kind of through the face, whereas I'd want them to feel as though that right, the trail arm, is kind of more flat across the chest and underneath um, the pec. Now, the second thing that you need to be careful of when doing this is I don't want to see the trail shoulder kind of lift away from the ground, okay? So you have to make sure that as you swing leftward that you maintain your tilt um, towards the trail side. Okay, so if I do that from the kind of down the line view, if I'm going across the, across my chest, um, you can see that I've maintained my trail trail side tilt, okay, on my rightward tilt, and I don't want to see this happen. Now the next important position is what you're doing with the lead arm in the fall through. So again, if I swing towards the camera, for those players that swing out to the right with a very closed club face. The hands kind of stay in front of the chest really, really long, okay? So when you're swinging across yourself, if I take my trail arm off, you can see that my left hand or the lead hand is kind of level with my shoulder or my neck, okay? You can see that there's a slight bend in there with my, my arm kind of externally rotated as if I'm losing the arm wrestling match. Um, my palm of my lead hand is facing towards the target and the club is kind of over top of me or kind of pointing over my head um, and a good way, a good visual is if you're holding an umbrella, you're just covering yourself with the umbrella. And what you don't want to see or what you see with, um, with people who hook the golf ball is that the club head is kind of to the left of the hands or on the opposite side of the hands like this. Okay. So you want, instead of rolling the hands and getting the club on this side of the hands, when you swing across yourself, 
right? Make sure you're covering yourself with the umbrella, um, palm of the lean hand facing towards the target. Now, if I go down, down the line, when I swing across myself, what's important to note is the extension or the cupping in this lead wrist. Now, that's very important in, in, your, in you being able to keep the club face open. If you roll the wrist, okay, you're going to see that the club is on this side of the hands. Club face is still really, really closed, uh, pointing towards the ground. If I swing it left and keep my lead wrist a bit more extended, you can see that the club face stays more exposed to the camera, which means that it's more open. So give this a try and let me know what you guys think. And instead of focusing so much kind of on the downswing, um, focusing on the fall through and getting the direction correct in the fall through will actually influence what you're doing in the downswing. So instead of, you know, getting it out to the right with a very closed face and hooking it, uh, the next time you can go try and swing it left. Hope this helps. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment down below. Be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K. Moss if you want to inquire about online lessons. I will also leave a link to my website in the description box below as well. Other than that, I will see you guys next week.